Hey buddies, Potato McWhiskey here and welcome back to Let's Play Civilization 6 as Alexander. Alrighty, now can I get the kill on Sao Paulo without losing my crossbowman here? Because that's what I'm really concerned about, is losing the crossbow. I think I can. I'm going to pop over here. And because this guy has five movement, I'll be able to pillage and still attack with him, like so. Perfect, and then I will get an attack in with this guy. We'll finish the city off here. Oh no, I actually cannot escape with this crossbowman, can I? Hmm. That is unfortunate. Let me think about, can I save this crossbowman? He might die here no matter what I do. And I need this crossbowman, that's not good. Hmm. Hmm. Maybe I'll pop him. Let's see. You do have the garrison promotion. So if I pop you onto the holy site, at the very least, you'll have more combat strength. You might take two individual hits, but at least you're safer there. And that works out just better for me. Now, this newly captured city, we, of course, are going to repair buildings uh, and then go ahead and get monuments and stuff like that. But looking pretty happy with the state of the game so far. We're going to be able to come down to Guadalajos, take out Porto Alegre, head to Belim, and take out Rio de Janeiro. I don't know if I pronounced those cities' names correctly, but I gave it a shot. <laughs> okay, the Aztecs are denouncing me because I've been a huge warmonger. Okay, we did lose that unit. Not the end of the world. And there is Monarchy. I'm going to, of course, take Monarchy. And we're going to be retooling our government slightly. I'm actually going to move conscription up here. And then I'm going to come in here and plug autocratic legacy in the bottom. I don't have units to upgrade at the moment. And I'm pretty happy with this layout as it is. So I think that's fine. I would like a little bit more gold. If I had the card that gives me gold from envoys, I would plug that in. I'm going to just plug in charismatic leader. And leave it at that for now. So... I do want to get that card that gives me gold from Envoys, and I think it's Medieval Fairs. So we'll get to work on researching that. And the nice thing about Monarchy is that because I can plug in Autocratic Legacy, I essentially get the benefit of my Autocratic, Autocratic Legacy government with a little bit more influence and uh, a little bit more government policy cards. We have a thingy, a uh, market in Methane now. Um, and currently, like, it's so cheap to build units in terms of production that I'm really being dumb if I don't just build units, I think. So we're going to start pumping out knights and stuff like that. Oh, I completely forgot to plug in the chivalry card. Do I have a cheap thing that I can research? No, I'm going to have to wait. So that, that's unfortunate. I mean, units are still extremely cheap. So we'll still get knights pretty damn quick. In fact, they might even be cheap enough to some of these captured cities. Uh, it might be worth it to pump out uh, knight cards or knight units. But we'll, we'll see so far. Uh, I will, of course, be healing up. I'm kind of tempted to get the kill on this crossbowman, but the danger of that is I would be in range of Guarla Garulho, I don't know, this city. <laughs> this city. And uh, there might be a crossbowman in there that'll shoot me. So I'm just going to take the time to heal up a little bit. And uh, I do need more reinforcements up here. I'm a little bit kind of stuck for reinforcements. I'm going to see if I can get this crossbowman up to reinforce along this sort of axis. Still continuing to level up my catapult here. He'll soon become a bombard when I have the nighter for it, of course. I could actually technically do it now if I plugged in the 50% strategic resource card. So that is unfortunate, but we are going to a dark age. It's something we have to accept. Now, the hope is that Brazil is at least in a dark age or a normal age. So they are in a normal age and um, we have a little bit of an issue in sao paulo so i'm going to reassign magnus over to sao paulo to buy me some time those 11 turns will make a huge difference and in fact i'm going to come in here and change my government i'm going to pull out the feudal contact i'm going to plug in praetorium i need that loyalty and um, we will also plug in the let's see here limitanie i think i might have to get rid of autocratic legacy here to be able to get everything that I want into my government, because I really want chivalry. And, uh, yeah, let's close this menu real quick. Can I actually upgrade you? So if I plugged in the Niter card, so, hmm, right, so what we're going to do is, we definitely need Praetorium, and we definitely need Limitanie right here. 
So I'm going to get rid of Feudal Contract, I'll get rid of Veterancy, because I should be producing units anyway right now, because unit, unit production is so cheap that there's no reason to be building infrastructure. Uh, I'll get rid of Autocratic Legacy, I think, and I'll plug in Professional Army as well as Retinues. So this seems like a much more balanced government. Yeah, I like this. I might even get rid of serfdom here. I'm going to keep serfdom because that's a good way for me to keep extending my economy by building builders as much as I need that gold. So this is going to allow me to actually upgrade this into a bombard for 160 gold and the 10 nitre that I happen to have, which is great because now I have a really, really powerful siege unit that'll contribute to the war. And I also need to look after this city in terms of loyalty. I would maybe consider buying a monument. It's only minus 0.4. The hard thing is this grievance penalty is going to get worse as time goes on. So I really need to capture this city and this city to kind of ease up on that loyalty. I don't really have good options here for generating uh, error score except for monumentality. So we'll grab monumentality in my capital. I could go for the foreign ministry, which would allow me to leverage city state units. I think that's not going to be super helpful because I've been having trouble getting suzerainty. And I've also been having f trouble with gold. So my best move might be something like Grand Master's Chapel, which would allow me to convert my little faith income into unit. Um, I could also go for Intelligence Agency to get vi like combat bonuses. So it's really a choice here between these two, as far as I can tell. And I think faith production seems nice. Although using getting a spy in six turns, and then if I could get them established in like Sempoala, and use them to generate diplomatic visibility could be very powerful. Also, I need to get my hands on uh, on um, printing to get the extra level of diplomatic visibility here because that's... Actually, if I hover over this unit here, you can see that neither unit has extra combat strength from diplomatic visibility. So if I were able to get a spy and printing, I would get plus six combat bonus against these guys. So I think, well, normally... The problem is this doesn't like the problem is I'm going to get the spy anyway. It would just be later. So the question is, do I want the spy now to get the diplomatic visibility or do I want the ability to convert my faith into units right now? I could convert a lot of units with faith because we do have a resolution. So I would have 15 turns and I think the ratio is like pretty favorable with faith. I think it's like yeah you know what I think the spy is the right move I want to make each individual unit as strong as possible because I'm not going to have trouble actually building an army now in some of these newer cities we will be focusing a little bit on infrastructure like granaries in here to keep these cities growing because the higher the population they are the more loyalty pressure they apply even though they're not really applying a whole lot of loyalty pressure at this stage of the game it's still necessary uh, for example in Manaus it would be nice to get the market and trade routes are so important to my income right now that I'm going to prioritize that. I would like to go to, I would like to fight a little bit this guy. He's going to pillage me if I don't try to kill him. So I guess it might be the right move to step here, get a good surround and hit him with each of my units. This will also get me some XP. The unfortunate thing is I will abandon the city for a single turn and that's going to have a significant impact on loyalty unless I can buy like a cheap unit. No. So unfortunately we will take a loyalty hit in the city for a turn but that's okay we'll sort of we'll, we'll pull that back in time the good news is i have a bombard and we're going to be bombarding away for experience uh you go ahead and shoot there this crossbowman is making their way to the north so it's a five turn you step in there and heal that'll bring it up to 93 turns i do need another garrison unit let's pull you back to heal do need another garrison unit. In fact, I should probably pull you back a little bit further to heal. Just so the crossbowman has to come a little bit closer. Alrighty. I'm going to harvest to get this intelligence agency faster, I think. Now, I could put a mine here and get a 2-4 tile. Or I could harvest, get the 72 production now, and get one less production per turn. So I think that's worth it to harvest now. I get the one less production per turn for a little while. At least until we have industrialization. Alright, ballistic... All right, so there is the field cannon and the cuirass here. Now, thankfully, we do have professional army plugged in. We're going to be plugging out retinues uh, as soon as possible. We can get cuir cuirassiers here in a moment. And we can also get field cannons. It's really a question of which one do we think is more important. So we're still leveling up this bombard. I think I'll step you into the city and you'll take over this position. And we'll keep shooting away. We've got a cuirass here coming through here. Now, let me think about what our next moves are. So we got this all-important bombard and stuff like that. What's our next major upgrade? It would probably be to, 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 pick up, um, to pick up the military academy. I think that's a pretty good pickup here. Although I do also want to pick up 
a flight and stuff like that. But I think I'm going to head down this military science pathway, particularly for picking up printing and then heading up to military science to be able to build military academies. So we've got the Granary in Alexandria Troas. This city could definitely use a builder. It's working some unimproved tiles. There's like a couple lumber mills here. There's a harvest, there's a chop and a mine right here. Another lumber mill here. So this city could definitely use a builder. Got another mine in the capital, looking very nice in the capital now. Our productivity is through the roof. The only thing I'm, hmm, the only thing I might consider is maybe improving this mine right here to uh, get another productive tile because we are working a two food, one production tile, which is a little bit less than ideal. And we're about to finish the intelligence agency, which will allow us to start getting those combat bonuses. We'll have printing soon. Uh, that's not a good enough deal for my luxuries, my dude. Okay, so let's go ahead and pop into our government. We're going to pull out retinues because we don't really have a whole lot of units to upgrade resource-wise. We do want conscription to lower our gold cost. And man, it really feels like I need to pull out serfdom and plug in caravanseries to get that gold that I need. I'm going to just confirm policies for now and live on a very low income for a little bit. And we'll sort of work on things as they come. Next up, it would be good to make my way towards nationalism so that I can start making army corps. So we'll go ahead and pick up guilds and then head towards diplomatic service. Got the intelligence agency in my capital. Let's go ahead and send that over to, um, where is Brazil? Send them over to Sempoala and we'll do a listening post. Although it might be a good idea to level him up first. Hmm. Because it's plus two visibility if he's a secret, secret agent. It's a tough choice to make. I'm going to send him to Sempoala and see what we can do there. In the meantime, I think I would like to get a commercial hub in my capital, even though unit production seems really appealing to me at this moment. I, I don't have the gold. I just do not. So I'm going to harvest right now in my capital city. That should force growth in here, which is what we want. So growth was forced. We're up to five turns away from hitting 11 population. And then we're going to build the commercial hub here. Now, I could put it here for plus five, but I think I'll take the plus three. The plus three is good enough for me, and it doesn't kill a really productive tile. Um, what I'm also going to do first, however, is actually get that trader. Do I want to get the trader first? Yeah, I, de I definitely need to get the traders first. I need that gold income. So we've got a cuirassier here. This cuirassier is going to go ahead and pillage for some science. I need to hurt his science and gain as much as I can. So I got about a, a bit more than a turn there. I'm also going to upgrade this field cannon to be more useful in combat. And I'm hoping that this cuirassier strong enough that it can't be really stopped and we'll go ahead and produce another grass here although man these monuments and granaries are so productive but like man i can build a cuirass here in about as long as it takes me to build those like six turns is a very fast build time on those i have the workshop over here in i guy i could actually go ahead and get one of my traders in here to help out my capital city a little bit and I definitely need another builder in here eventually. Right now, none of these tiles can really be improved except for this one. And the only thing that I'm missing is really a, uh, a, a campus here. So it could be about time where we start producing some units in this city. So we'll get that trader first. Market completed in Chalkadiki. They definitely need a builder in here to help repair things. So we'll get that builder up. And we have defensive units positioned. Excellent. Almost ready to heal up and continue pushing. These guys need to be upgraded. And I do have another governor promotion. And I think I might go ahead and spend that on Liang just as another source of loyalty. But more importantly, I can throw her into Alexandria Troas and potentially get an extra build charge in there in the short term. My cuirass here took a lot of damage, which is to be expected. We're going to do a lot of damage here. I might start bombarding the city as a preference. Now, you're going to take a lot of shots here if you pillage this, but I think you'll survive regardless, right? That 94 science is very valuable to me to get printing faster, which will give me combat bonuses. So that crossbowman needs to die. We should be able to pull that off in a couple turns. Again, organizing trade routes by gold. We don't have super amazing gold trade routes available. I could trade with Babylon. Babylon's a little bit of a dangerous trade route in my opinion, but I might go ahead and take it. Plus four gold is a really big deal to me at this stage of the game. So we'll continue to manage that. I don't want to be friends with anyone right now. So I'm going to refuse friendship. Beautiful. Thankfully that knight just like completely blew up his own health pool. 
and we can just retreat this cuirass here. Mission accomplished, right? He blew up the campus. Mission accomplished. And we could just continue to blow up this city. Uh, and we'll even be able to take it and start advancing on the enemy. Another trader, uh, trader completed in Aigai. I'm going to go ahead and trade with Nechen. That'll get me quite a bit of gold and a little bit of food, which is nice too. Not, not so important on the food front. Um, it's just a nice little thing. I'm trying to think, is there anything I could build to get a little bit more money? I could run commercial hub projects, which would potentially result in more gold. It's not a terrible idea, and I don't hate it, but I definitely need to sort out my gold problem. This place could use a builder? I have builder charge. No, I have a builder charge in the area. Yeah, and I think we're fine in terms of builders. Um, definitely feel like a commercial hub investment could be a good move right now. I'm trying to think about what exactly we want to do. I mean, honestly, the best thing to do might just be to build another Quirisphere to join my army. So I'll pop one of those out. They're a little expensive, so I do want to be careful about how much I'm doing. No, you know what? I need that gold. I need the gold to upgrade my unit. So I'm going to do some commercial hub investments. And the side effect of that will be actually to get some of these great merchants that might actually help out with my production uh, you know, problems as well. Egypt is making demands of me, which is not good because she is denouncing me and she may look to go to war with me, but I'm willing to live with that possibility. So the two crossbowmen and the city shot are a little bit of a problem for me, but I'm going to have this crossbowman guard the city. I'll bring my great general forward. There's three crossbowmen here. That's an even bigger problem than I had anticipated. But if we play this very carefully, we'll be just fine. This One of these guys is going to take a lot of damage. And it's probably going to be this guy. So you know what I might do? I might sacrifice the great general to get pushed back to one of my other cities. He might try to step out here and capture it, seeing it being like an opportunity. And then we'll, we'll have another crossbowman in the open to kill. Natal has finished its granary. Um, so I, I, I kind of feel like I need commercial hubs, but at the same time, this city could use a builder. Like there's, there's two luxuries on the table here. I do have a builder coming out of like Alexandria Troas. Um, this will be a one, two, three, four, five, potential five to six charge build path. Whereas I need a couple more. So I tell you what I will do. I'll pro well, this actually should be a commercial hub. So I might go double builder here into commercial hub on this tile. It's the best commercial hub tile that I don't have to purchase. And that's like a really big advantage right now is not having to purchase, even if it is a mine tile, I'm going to accept it as the place where I put my commercial hub because I just need that to not cost me money. And then I'll go for another commercial hub over here. It'll be a plus three. Not amazing, but still does the trick. It will take 23 turns, but I'm hoping that the builder will help out a little bit. We've got the commercial hub in Sao Paulo as well. We're going to work on the monument to get the loyalty back here because we only need just a scooch of loyalty to start being positive and not running into issues. We'll keep blowing up these units and this city as well. Beautiful. We now have expert crew, which is really damn good. We'll soon have forward observers. So we have heavily leveled up this bombard far earlier than it would normally be. And that's going to stick to us for the rest of the game. Having a really highly leveled bombard is extremely useful for long-term conquest. Now, I know we haven't made a lot of actual progress, like on, but on paper, we're making huge strides towards actually winning the war. Don't worry about that. So we killed another crossbowman. And we're also going to be pillaging some districts to pull in extra cash. And what this is going to allow me to do is to upgrade these knights. So that's that's what this that's what's going on right here. We're trying to build up an economy to actually upgrade these into cuirassiers to take this city. So there is Gustavus Adolphus. I'm going to have Gustavus fight on the southern front here. So we do need to take care of this, and we need to continue to bombard the city. We can take this city now pretty much whenever we want. We just have to get this tile clear and get this cuirassier into that tile to hit the city. So we can take Fortaleza whenever we need to. And for the purpose of that, I'm going to have Reyna ready to go. Let's pop a mine here in the capital. Look, look at this. Look at this capital, by the way. This is a ridiculous capital. It's incredibly powerful. The sheer number of tiles that it's working, like the amount of investment that's gone into this capital is kind of insane. And it's soon going to have another tile to work that's high production. And like the sheer amount of science and culture we're pumping out of there, thanks to Pingala, is 
It's kind of blowing my mind a little bit. Okay, great. I would really love to have the raid card plugged in to get the extra gold out of these pillages. But it, it's just... It, it's just money. Like, I could start hitting the city, but my units are just a little bit too weak right now. I, and I also want to kill these um, these catapults. So i tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to go ahead and take that pillage. And retreat this guy back. Uh, I could go pillage this too. But maybe I want to keep that campus alive. For now. Because his science per turn is not a threat to me at the moment. So we'll just step forward and kill. And then kill. Then you'll fall back. And then next turn we'll be able to upgrade all three of these guys into cuirassiers. Heal them up. And then take the city. I have another cuirassier. Coming to join the front line. I think now is the time we take Fortaleza. So the real question is, what's the loyalty like in here? It's minus 14. That's going to get worse. That's going to get worse. Um, it's minus 10. So if we could reassign Reyna to Fortaleza, that'll be a healthy minus 0.03. So that seems much more reasonable um, as far as things go. Let's get my Quirus here to kill this crossbowman hiding on the holy site. And this city is immediately going to repair a monument to try and stabilize its loyalty. So you see, see now we're making progress, right? So you, you, I hope you can see how I basically spent two episodes setting up to make the war as easy as possible. Rather than trying to grind my units into an enemy super early into the game. Um, sometimes that can work, but... <laughs> Just the position I was in, it just wasn't going to work against Brazil because he was too far ahead in science. If I was up against someone like maybe um, Nubia, this would be an even bigger problem. Or the Aztecs, it would be much less of a problem. Just You have to kind of identify when and, when and where you can strike and how. I could go for the Forbidden City here. Um, it feels like an awful lot of investment for very little gain when I could just be pumping into... Uh, picking up Raja Todarmal, who would actually be a huge boon to doing internal trade routes in my empire. So I might just do this, because this is the best way I have of actually fueling my economy right now, is commercial hub investments, and then subsequently using the special ability of this great merchant for internal trade routes. Talking about Methane, if we're looking at momentum-based play, I definitely would like a builder up here in Manaus. So I want to have a build charge for that. I think we're going to start with a harvest here to get this builder online as early as possible to get this niter improved. Yeah, I like that plan. But in terms of methane, it's, it's hard to know exactly what we want to do. I might take Monument Granary Armory. Temple of Artemis is like available. I definitely need more traders. I thought I was building more. I think a trader got pillaged. Yeah, Buenos Aires. I'm at war with Buenos Aires and I sent a trader to Egypt, so they pillaged that. That's a little unfortunate. Nothing I can do about that. I should just be more careful about how... I, that's why I want to do internal trade routes with the um, special ability from this great merchant so my, my trade routes won't get pillaged by randomly. Okay. Man, tough decisions in this city. See, the problem is I would like to get the granary, but the city doesn't really have any extra tiles to work. It might be good to pick up a monument... To sort of finish out this city's second ring and then maybe pick up some more tiles. Yeah, I think I'm going to grab the monument in here. I delayed that quite a bit. And my culture is still quite weak. There is the banking and there is guilds as well. I've got eight turns of loyalty in here and I think I can make that work. So let's get all these guys to step back. And pick up the Queerassier promotions. Because it only cost me 115 gold for that. So that'll help out quite a bit. Yeah, loyalty is going to get worse for a little while until we can get a handle on things. We're going to grab the market and the capital. In fact, first of all, though, I'm going to grab a trader because I need that trader. Let's pick up Amani and I'm going to plug Amani into Natal. No. Yeah, for now, I'll plug her into Natal just to keep loyalty nice and high there. But I need to take out Gualiarjos or whatever it's called. I'm going to harvest here to get that builder sooner. It'll get it in next turn. Beautiful. I'm doing a similar sort of thing down here. I'm sending a builder down to this uh, tile here 
to pick that up so we can get a builder out here and start improving Alexandretta. Because this city has been heavily neglected, as has Chaladiki. They have been uh, sort of put to the wayside in terms of improvement. Let's go ahead and take on that. We got rid of him. Step out. I think I can kill this crossbowman in a single turn. Perfect. I'm going to move you forward. This crossbowman is going to take up a garrison of Fortaleza to provide with um with a garrison force i'm going to need more units reinforcing but i want to grab that monument first so far i'm happy with the progress we're making i would like to take port alegre and the capital but it's all going to take some time no nope, i do not want to be your friends changri gupta i appreciate the offer though okay they have a bunch of crossbow now over here causing me some issues aha okay so i got 200 diplomatic favor which is an awful lot let's talk to egypt and just see how much they would need for this they would give me 46 gold per turn for all of this Diplo favor. The problem is I can't prevent them from ever going to war with me. So I'm going to just cut this down to like 20 and keep building it up. So it looks like 24-ish, 25, they'll give me their money. And just every now and again, I'm going to go around to the AI and take whatever gold they have in their bank by offering them diplomatic favor in different amounts. And I can use that money to upgrade my units and sustain my economy. I'm not going to buy all of it, but I have a decent amount there. Okay, I have two envoys. I think I'm going to take Nagazagarmu to my side. This is like the only city-state in the game that I care about because it gives me unit production. And I have another envoy sitting in my inventory. I could take Babylon Suzerainty. I could step into this. Shoot there. If I step forward with my field cannon. I'll shoot there. Shoot there. Step forward with my heavy cavalry. Take the barding promotion, occupy the city with you, get you to there, and take the promotion as well. Okay, things are looking pretty good so far. Now I can bring my cuirassiers back. I need to get rid of that crossbowman. Crossbowman defeated. And now I need to start doing damage to this city. And thankfully, my cuirassiers are so strong, I can punch through the city's walls. And thankfully, the city was also hit by a flood, so the walls were weak anyway. Decided to get a third builder in here to help out some of these other cities. Because I have stuff like NIDER that I need to get online that I'm just not... That I just don't have online right now. Um, this trader, I think... Since we're going to be looking to do internal trade routes for safety reasons, I'm going to place this in Chalkadiki. And I'm going to be primarily trading with my capital that I'm planning on trying to build up as big as possible. So I'm going to do listening post here in the Sempoala, because this is the last city that I plan to take. And you can see here, if I hover over enemy cities, now that I have printing and a spy providing diplomatic visibility, I get an additional plus six combat strength when fighting Brazil. So that's another way that we can kind of feed into the entire idea of uh, doing as much damage as we can possibly do against them. No peace for you, I'm afraid. Now, this queer ass here took an awful lot of damage, but that's okay, because our main goal here is to defeat enemy units. Let's talk to Nubia and see if she'll take peace because she has, uh, I spotted a very dangerous thing here, a Nubian cavalry running around and I really don't want to deal with that right now because that'll do a ridiculous amount of damage to me. Uh, I think this is a kill. I have 40 more combat strength, so that's a kill. I think this is a kill as well. So we're just, they're just hemorrhaging units now, which is exactly what we want. If we can make them bleed, then they shall bleed. Blow up Port Alegre. Completely occupy it. We're going to keep that city. Loyalty in here is fine. We'll reassign a Mani to Port Alegre, which will buy me a little bit of time on the loyalty. Now, there's a, there's a bit of a trade-off here, because every time we capture a city, we do increase our grievances. We're also lo lowering the loyalty pressure on some of these back cities. Um, so that, that's a nice sort of consequence of that. But the conquest is going very well now, and it shall speed up soon. I'm going to pick up a couple of coursers here, uh, purpose just purely to be able to garrison and free up some of these garrison units. And they're relatively fast, and they'll get to the front line nice and quick. It's okay to use crossbowmen, because they're kind of out, of out of date units that I don't have to upgrade, and they're already sitting around. But ideally, some kind of fast unit that can kind of follow behind the front line and be a garrison where it's needed is uh, is ideal so we're gonna be we're actually gonna be trading with our capital because it's three food one product or, or three food for production from trading with the capital and that'll eventually be worth gold once we pick up this great merchant i could pick him up right now but we're holding off we're going to be doing the same thing over here in i actually i might move this to alexandretta 
and try to help out these two cities because they, they've been falling behind quite a bit. Um, in terms of builders, you're fine for now. What would be good is if I could get you built up with these. Although I don't want to spend gold on this. Although it's not, it's not terrible. It'll give me a little bit of gold back from this commercial hub, so that's okay. Uh, in terms of repairing this city, just get repairs going. That'd be perfect. So I'm going to harvest here to get this builder faster and then improve that city. You are going to go ahead and take the reactive armor promotion. My cavalry are getting very highly promoted, which I'm very happy about. Let's make sure we're keeping guys nice and safe. It's a crossbowman up here to the north. That's not going to be a problem for me. I don't think a crossbowman represents a really big threat. Not when I'm about to kill Brazil. So let's get a full surround on the city. Start hammering on it with our units. It should fall this turn. Perfect. City has fallen. It will rebel in five turns, but if I keep the city, I'll buy me another turn or two. And the important thing is the loyalty pressure on these cities is much lower. So I can take someone like Victor and reassign him to Guaralhos uh, and provide even more loyalty pressure in this area. And we can even take out this crossbowman. So we've completely crippled Brazil. Like at this point, Brazil is done for as far as I'm concerned. Um, the only thing we want to ask is like, is there anything we might want to pillage that would like be easy enough to repair? Like for example, these dyes and stuff like that to get a little bit of faith. But we should be able to take out Rio in a couple of turns and we're going to be doing internal trade routes like so. More lumber mills up here in the north. Alexandria Troas has a really strong production line now. Very, very like very interesting way to develop your empire so far this game. I tried like this isn't normally a strategy I would go for, but it seems to have gone pretty well. I'm going to go ahead and vote that down. It looks like people joined in. It looks like Pedro and Aminator. So Aminator is a bit of a problem. I don't want to be at war with her and she's never going to take peace uh, while we're in this sort of grudge match. Now, she, my cavalry are very, very strong. So that's the one saving grace I have. But let's continue to take promotions on these guys because if I can get them up to double shot, that's a nice boost. Question is, do I try to kill this cavalry or do I try to focus down Rio? Kind of like the idea of focusing down Rio. The sooner I can get that down, the better. Plus, there's a ton of experience on the line here. I don't think you can actually reach the city, but I think we can get us around if I do this. That's a Stola Builder, which I'm happy about. And you'll be able to get a level up, actually, from fighting this guy, which is pretty cool. Market completed in Pella. That means another trader. Perfect. Working on that empire-wide infrastructure. How close are we to this guy? Very, very close to getting the great merchant. And in fact, I think we're finishing another commercial hub investment in two turns, which we are. Let's pull you up. Finally got the horses repaired in here. And now we can start looking into actually improving things in this city. For example, there could be a lumber mill here. I need that tea improved. That's another luxury. Another lumber mill in this city. And we'll start sending these builders out to do important things like these niter tiles and stuff. You want to buy some iron for me? I'm going to go ahead and take that deal. Two gold per turn isn't too bad. Oh, okay. So thankfully, my cuirassiers are strong enough to actually fight off this cavalry. So we did actually manage to get a kill there. And this guy has a level up, which is perfect. Now, the downside here is there's a bit of a pike and shot problem. Um, and they're strong enough to withstand cuirassiers. So let's blow through this city as fast as we can. And who's close to a level? This guy's pretty close to a level. Uh, killing a city gets you about 10 experience. Lots of tech boosts right there. So killing a city gets you about 10 experience. I'm gonna need someone to provide loyalty in that city. I think I can move Magnus. So we'll reassign Magnus to Rio de Janeiro. Perfect. And um, we can start rebuilding this city relatively quickly. I'm without too much hassle. Next up on the menu is Belim or Belem. Uh, because we captured a city with a world wonder, all of our units healed, which is perfect. Now, you, you can kind of strategize and keep cities uncaptured so that you can pick up those world wonders. I don't worry about that too much. It's just not, I don't think it's that important to play around, personally. Just not super important, but we can for sure hit the hell out of Belim so they're not ready. Okay, keeping the city will give the opponent 75 grievances, yes. In terms of developing Sao Paulo, it's got to be markets. I, I need to get these markets out. It's the only way I ever really develop my empire that I'm capturing here is with these internal trade routes. We've got another trader. I think I'm going to send this one to Fortaleza. Or do I have one in Methane yet? So I still have about six turns worth of unit, like fast unit production now. 
if we take a look at Egypt, I could take them on, I think. They have a relatively large army, but I don't think they could withstand, uh, like, a couple, like, a few cuirassiers running around. So I might just get, like, three cuirassiers, upgrade these to field cannons, and then just go ham on Egypt. Um, I think that seems like a pretty decent thing to do. And by decent, I mean good, not necessarily morally good. <laughs> All right, beautiful. So I have a courser who is very weak to a bike and shot. So we'll kind of avoid getting hit by those. But the courses are nice because they'll follow up and help out. Let's go ahead and get another mine in here. Perfect. Now, if we look at the productivity of this city, um, there's not really a whole lot of tiles that are worth picking up here. Weirdly enough, I can't actually claim this tile for this city. It's because they're occupied. You can't swap tiles in occupied cities. Got it. So do I want to improve this fish? Improving the fish isn't like the worst thing you can do. It does provide a little bit of gold and a little bit of food, but I think my builders are better spent elsewhere. No peace for you, Brazil. Only your total destruction will be acceptable, I'm afraid. Perfect. By picking up diplomatic service, we can get another spy. We definitely want to pick up another spy and maybe train them up a little bit in Nubia, so we're better off uh, at actually like you know doing spy things in Nubia. Let's take Belém. It now belongs to me. Uh, let's reassign a Mani to Belem. And then we'll go ahead and keep that city. Things are looking up very nicely for me here. Uh, let's move this Bombard forward just a scooch. Bomb this unit. Move you forward a scooch. Bomb this unit. And then finish him off with this guy to pick up nearly a promotion. Very, very close to a promotion on this guy. And he'll be able to attack twice in a turn. Keep trading with Pella with all of our trade routes. Very close. Oh, there it is. So now if I look at these trade routes, these internal trade routes are providing me food and production. Once I use this guy, they'll also provide me with two gold each. There you go. An extra two gold on a trade route. That's basically like having this card automatically plugged in, Caravansary. So that's actually a very nice development for our empire in terms of our gold income. Because we're, we're having trouble with gold. Let's be frank here. Um, I think it is time to get the campus. It's a plus three campus. It's really hard to not justify it, and it'll improve my uh, industrial zone. So we'll get that campus. It's only five turns. It will hurt our short-term gold economy, but I need that campus. Alrighty. Alexandrietta. Do I want to keep these banana tiles? Well, one thing to be considered is that we're almost at mercantilism, which will allow me to build lumber mills on rainforests, which will turn these from plantation tiles into production tiles. So that's something to consider. I'm going to harvest here. That'll boost the city's population and boost the encampment. Capture that builder. So we've stolen a few builders that we can use to sort of retool our empire that we've captured. Very nice. Sempoala is going to go independent soon, but we don't want it to do that. We actually want to capture it ourselves. We do have to make a bit of a decision, though. Do we want to go after Nubia here? Um, they're going to be the hardest target for sure. They're way too scientifically advanced, but we're at war with them anyway. That's the thing. We're like, we're already at war with them. So it's kind of a case of we may as well. Um, and not only that, but we have like a highly highly developed bombard here that's only going to get stronger as time goes on i might send like a small contingency to fight them and then use the rest of my army to push into um to push into the aztecs and into india although india is a bit of a problem too because their cities are very strong as well like if we look at the technological standings here india is not far behind me they're relatively equal on tech, just because they had a bit of an advantage, right? They've been generating more tech than me for like a larger portion of the game. The siege tactics, we finally unlocked those forts that we had planned to build with our military engineer that we never got around to doing. Uh, let's go ahead and see if we can't get a good surround on the city. Uh, huh. Yeah, I think I'm going to basically ignore um, Nubia here and just go straight for um, the northern half, because this will give me time to catch up with Nubia to, uh, scientifically and then take them on later. 
Uh, a bit of a drought in Methanae, which is a kick in the nads. But we'll pick up the granary in here to allow the city to continue to grow. And we might go for the armory afterwards. I could go for the aqueduct for even more housing in here. The city doesn't really benefit from a whole lot more housing. It doesn't really have tiles to work if I were to increase that housing. The only thing that might make sense in here is maybe a campus. Um, but I guess I do have four turns left on unit production. So I may as well... I may as well get like a cheap unit like a courser as well to help out with the war to the south. Gold income is a bit of a problem. We'll sort that out. Don't you worry. Cap us in here. Repair that. Beautiful. Market completed in Manaus. Of course, of course, of course, we're going to want to improve that. We need to get all this basic infrastructure in here. These things are so valuable and they pay themselves off so quickly. Things like water mills are just always worth it. Lumber mill in Alexandretta. Perfect. The Basilicoi Pies. I really want a campus in here. Sorry, not a campus. I really want a commercial hub. But I'll go for the Basilicoi first to give me time to chop this uh, jungle tile to get the maximum benefit from it. Is it time to start hammering away at the city? I think it is. I have promotions on these guys. It'll be an opportunity for me to gather a little bit of experience uh, and do some damage to the city and stuff like that. Okay, Sempoella is currently now under siege, which is exactly where we want it to be. And I have four cuirassiers in position to hammer away. Actually, I'm looking for experience from killing this city over anything else. So I'm happy to sort of take as long as I need. And uh, I'd also like to get a bombard in with my bombard. Although this would reduce the total amount of experience I would get from the city. So we'll hold off and maybe bombard next turn. Let's go ahead and improve the niter. Excellent. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Now we actually have niter income, which is nice, as well as a really productive tile for the city to use. Um, might be just like a whole bunch of farms in here for Manaus. I'm not sure if that's going to make that into a useful city, but... We shall see. I think because we're so far into the game and because this is worth so much production, I think the best move here is to actually harvest to finish that commercial hub faster and get that temple up faster. And we're going to probably do the same thing on the coffee as well, rather than just straight up put a plantation on this tile. I feel like a lumber mill fits in right here in Chal Kadiki. Maybe I shouldn't narrate some of those smaller things. I'm definitely not going to sell you my oranges though. You can go straight to hell. Brazil still begging me for peace. No peace shall be acquired for you. I think I'm going to cancel renewing this mission and I'm going to get this guy in position inside of uh, the... Do, 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 do. I want them to be positioned in one of the Indian cities, preferably towards the back. Like my sword would be ideal. But I also want to be able to actually pull off a normal project. Hmm. So I'll put him in Patna, which is the capital. Same thing over here. I want the Basilicoi Paides. So again, just harvest the jungle and then place the plantation. Uh, when you get to this late stage of the game, it becomes more worth it to do that. Let's see if we can farm a little bit more experience in here before we blow the walls off the city with my bombard. I'm going to cross the river. Oh, that actually does not allow me to shoot. There's only one tile where it's allowed to shoot from. Okay, that makes sense. It's totally fine. Who is ready for a level up? You are ready for a level up. You're just about... You're close. You're really far away. Let's get the experience with the bombard first. And then... You will pick up the 10 XP from actually killing the city. Okay, so Brazil is now dead. They did not stand the test of time. And I get 5 era score. I could liberate this to the Aztec. Which would be a hundred diplo favor, which is kind of a big meme. <laughs> oh wow. I could get a hundred diplo favor and then immediately attack the Aztec. No, I'm just gonna keep the city. But the good news is we're not suffering quite so many loyalty penalties, and we can go ahead and reassign Victor over to Sempoala to pick up that nice loyalty boost. But unfortunately, now is the time 
to declare war on somebody else. I'll take a couple turns to heal up and then we'll get moving. There is one big downside to conquering all these cities. It's that you have a bunch of cities with really bad infrastructure. But each one of these cities does contribute a little bit of culture and a little bit of science. So it means I'm catching up technologically to Nubia. Not quite as fast as I would like, but we are slowly but surely catching up. So now there's a bit of a question as to whether um, Aethel Fred is uh out of date now i don't think any of my units are medieval i only have renaissance units which is the bombard and i think this guy already provides renaissance boosts so i could use him here in sempuala to get the plus two loyalty and then buy a monument and then i don't have to worry about loyalty in here at all so i think Aethelfred has outlived his usefulness so we will do exactly that and get the loyalty up to a much more manageable level. A vote for myself for these trade routes. Thank you. I think three should be enough and two should be enough for this. We'll see. Not always, but, you know, tends to work out pretty well. Okay, Aminatori won that one and I won that one. That's fine. No one starts a war. There's military science. More importantly, we now have access to the military academy, which allows me to train corps and uh, armadas or whatever they're called, armies, uh, directly. I feel like uncovering oil here would put me in a really, really good position to pick up flight units, but I feel like uh, building coal power plants would also put me in a really, really good position to um, sort of follow up that and actually have the production to build those units, especially now that coal power plants are going to be much more useful um, to my actual productivity to sustain my economy and I, I actually really 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 need to pick up things like libraries because they're worth plus four science each i never even built one in my uh, oh i did actually but I, I need things like universities as well so that's the kind of pathway we're on right now i need just a little bit more science to keep catching up so like i said i've been talking a little bit less about like each individual decision but i'm mostly just sticking to the current plan which is to try to harvest out builders when it makes sense and to continue to develop my city so that they're actually robust and have high production and gold incomes. Like for example, I've built a few farms in here. I've improved a few farms over here, but mostly looking for production down here and over here and stuff like that. Nothing, nothing, too, uh, nothing too out of the ordinary, I don't think. But you can see we have taken on Brazil and the next war should be way faster. I'm actually going to wait for the city to flip independent so it's just a, that little bit easier to take. As expected, out popped little musketmen. So we're going to want to need to deal with those musketmen. Let's bring our cuirassiers in. Oh, well then. Uh, I think now is the time to declare war on Changdra Gupta. Probably should have used a um, non-surprise war, but the hard part is having that many grievances. So I might just denounce him and uh, and wait just a few turns to get the because grievances are actually a big big problem in a domination game i should have been thinking about that damn that's definitely a mistake on my part but we should have no problem uh bombarding this guy and taking him out and stealing that kill for ourselves but we'll just have to delay this war by a little bit i could redirect and kill the aztec but the loyalty pressure there is going to be really really difficult to deal with until i have these two cities and then i can sweep in i might even split my army up actually there's an idea attack both simultaneously have my armies split yeah that might actually work grabbing the university in my capital and in Igai because i really want those science incomes and it'll also be able to justify further investment of envoys into a place like babylon and hattusa which will give me a decent amount of science for my universities and stuff like that cool thing is i did actually manage to capture uh, Machu Picchu, which means I have some interesting positions open for like adjacency bonuses. Like I can get a plus three here. I can get a plus four industrial zone. But I think these cities are not going to work that deep. There's going to be encampments and commercial hubs. Uh, I think right now what we need to defeat uh, Egypt is just an army, really. So things like an armory make sense. Never pass up an opportunity to get experience on a siege unit, especially if it's against a free city. It's only, it may only be two experience per turn, but uh, it's an opportunity to get experience, which is important. Let's get our three cuirassiers heading down over here. And I think I no longer need these coursers as garrison units, so they're going to be used as garrisons against the Aztecs, following along after these cuirassiers who will take over Chalco and Aztacapalazalco. God, I don't know how to say that. I'm going to be start... 
I'm going to be starting to build a couple of entertainment complexes just to help maintain my amenities. I'll soon be unlocking things like zoos and they'll be a great way to keep the amenities up in the local area. Just kind of pop them down. It's kind of important in a domination game. Less so important for someone like Alexander who doesn't actually deal with much war wariness problems. But, uh, well, none at all because he, he doesn't get them. But still, it, it can be a great way to sort of preserve... Um, preserve yields that was another left click move god damn it <laughs> it's the most annoying thing in the game the left click move man i think we are now just about ready to declare war on egypt i just need these guys to be field cannons and they in fact will be very soon uh, because egypt has plenty of things that we can pillage for gold and plenty of cities to sustain our war so let's get the war started on egypt of course, have a cast's belly. It will be a formal war. Uh, quite a bit of grievances from this, but mm, not the end of the world. One question to ask, though, is how close... Yeah, okay, we're not close enough to another era that will, might unlock another cast's belly. So we'll just do a formal war here. It's going to carry about the same penalties as like a, a default surprise war. But the advantage is, of course, that she denounced me quite a while ago. So I don't get quite as bad a deal. Right, so she has knights, which are good by every, you know, every measure, but not quite as good as these things. Oh, you can become a cavalry. I feel like a cavalry is actually better here for me because the sheer amount of combat strength they have really works in my favor. We have the city surrounded. We may as well hit it uh, at least once. Maybe bait them out into attacking me in the open. And I might be able to snipe this city too. We'll kind of have a look and see if that works out for me. Okay, knight, you have knighted your last knight. So bombard the hell out of that knight. Bring over this cuirass here into the fray. Uh, you could kill this crossbowman. Why are you so weak? I don't understand. You could kill this crossbowman, however, by working together. Bada bing, bada boom. Crossbowman is dead. Then we can slowly work on Cahokia. I did actually spot a lumber mill up here, but it's already pillaged, so I won't be able to pillage it for gold. And I think we declare war on the Aztecs here uh, in a couple turns as well. Like I'm, I feel like I'm like one or two turns away from Aztec war, and they should they should fall pretty quick underneath the cuirassiers because they're very very far behind. A little bit more experience for my siege unit, and you can kind of see how yes, it took a very long time to get to this point, but now that we're here. Pretty much everyone is going to crumble beneath my beneath my army, with the exception of Nubia, who is just being going to be a bit of a thorn in my side. Like, like already Egypt is in dire. Like, if this was if I was Egypt as a player and I saw this in my land, I would be panicking. I would be panicking Skywalker right now. You have no idea how terrifying it is to see things like cuirassiers just waltz into your territory and take a city down to 75% health when it has no walls. Next episode, I fully expect us to conquer almost the majority of India, the full uh, thing of Egypt, and then we'll begin the war with Nubia in earnest. So the reason why I want to kill Egypt first, by the way, is because she actually has me covered by her religion. So she needs to die. Otherwise, she might win the game. But yeah, I love you all very much. And I'll see you guys next time. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Bye-bye.